The following is paid programming. Welcome to Something More with Chris Boyd, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner and Founder of Asset Management Resources, LLC, a registered investment advisor firm. We call it Something More because we like to talk not only about those important dollar and cents issues, but also the quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Here he is, your fulfillment facilitator, your partner in prosperity, advising clients across the country, your host, Jay Christopher Boyd. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Something More with Chris Boyd. I'm here with Jeff Perry, and we are so excited. We've got a great guest to bring to you now. We have Ed Slott. Uh, he is the nationally recognized IRA distribution expert, professional speaker, television personality, and best-selling author. He is uh, uh, known for uh, so many. Uh, you've probably seen him on uh, public television or uh, heard him on the radio, and uh, he has... Uh, been named by uh, the Wall Street Journal as the best source for IRA advice. Ed has written, I don't know how many books. Uh, one of them I have right here. It is uh, The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb, and I uh, hope you'll check that out. And in the meantime, let me get right to it. Ed, thank you so much for being with us. Well, it's great to be here. You might notice I have a few bo of those books laying around, too. <laughs> you That's know what? subliminal. I how did you do that? Uh, well, at the last uh, conference we were doing, I saw them all behind you. I was like, okay, yeah. I got to promote that book. Yeah. So thank Actually, you there's a new one already coming out in 24 because they keep changing the rules. Sure. What's that one going to be? It's called the Retirement Savings Time Bomb Ticks Louder. Uh, ticks louder. Good. I forget what the title we're going because it just keeps getting worse every time Congress meets and the IRS creates rules. It's getting so ridiculous and it's so hard to get your retirement savings out of a retirement account without stepping on landmines or tra uh, tax traps. And the, the real uh, problem here is these are among the most complex rules in the tax code. But to make it worse, many of them, as you know, being a part of our educational group on this, uh, many of these rules are irrevocable and mistakes can be costly when you're talking about a person's life savings, all the money they saved in their 401ks and into IRAs, all at risk of future taxes or tax mistakes made by financial institutions and advisors that just don't know the rules. So uh, there's so much to consider and it can be overwhelming. Um, maybe we can talk about what are some of the things that people should be paying attention to right now, This particularly this time of year, as uh, we've got a little bit of time before the year end, what should our listeners be thinking about as uh, things to prioritize before the year's over? Well, if you saved quite a bit, most of your savings, and I think that's the case with most people these days, most of their savings for retirement are in retirement accounts. Now that may sound like, well, that's obvious. No, it isn't. This is the <laughs> first generation actually ending up with retirement accounts. Our parents, where uh, me and probably many of uh, listeners or well, uh, viewers are the baby boomers, but our parents uh, didn't have retirement accounts. They had something, and you may want to make a note of this, called <laughs> pensions, P-E-N-S-I-O-N-S. -S. Yeah. It was a check they gave people for nothing. You believe Beautiful. it? <laughs> These companies just gave out checks and checks and checks for people for the rest of their lives. They're not even working for it until somebody went to a corporation, these big companies, uh, back in the late 70s and early 80s and said to them, you know, Mr. Corporation, how would you like to shift the risk and responsibility mm -hmm. of saving for your employees' retirement from you to them? <laughs> Where do I sign up for that? <laughs> and that became the 401k. So now we have the new generation, right. the baby boomers coming out with actual money, but it's tax deferred money in IRAs and 401k. So the challenge is getting it out. So what should they do uh, near year end? Well, anybody with a large retirement account at all times should be examining this, working with an advisor that has specialized knowledge in this area, which is why I created the group that you're a member of, Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group because years ago, and by the way, next year will be the 20th year of this educational group. Congratulations it's, started, wow. it's, it's unbelievable. Amazing. It started as a private study group for advisors that realized, wait a minute, 
there's two parts to this, kind of like a football game. You know, there's the first half and the second half. And there's an old saying in football, the score at halftime is mm -hmm. irrelevant. Give me the score at the end of the game, and then I'll tell you who won. Mm -hmm. So the first half is all the building, working, saving, sacrificing, and investing. That's the first half, accumulation. Right. But there's a second half which most people miss and most advisors miss. And that's why people's retirement savings are at risk because they get to what I call halftime, but they think it's the end of the game. They say, look at this, look at this, we're retired. We've we've saved all we the did money yep. we, we made ever it. did for retirement. They pat themselves on the back, go off to the locker room. Meanwhile, IRS is coming out. They're playing the third and fourth quarter. They're playing nobody. So they win. So advisors start very few, like you did, uh, picked up, wait a minute, I've got to help people through the second half of the game. There's accumulation and protecting that money and getting it out. And that's where all these complex rules hit. So you can have an average advisor may help you make money, but when it comes to IRAs and 401ks, these are tax deferred, not tax free. The money is taxable. It's a big bag of tax. It's not about just making people money but helping them keep more of it. It's what you keep that counts at the end of the game. That's how you know if you've won. And the average advisor, these rules are just beyond them. They rarely study these rules. In fact, I could give you some statistics based on my experience with training advisors in our company. We've trained more advisors like you, Chris, than in this particular area, the taxation of retirement accounts in anyone in the country. And I will tell you that 99% of advisors don't have the specialized knowledge you're relying on to help protect your retirement savings and keep more of it. Now, people watching or listening might say, Ed, come on, you're saying only 1% of advisors know anything about this? No, I exaggerated. Yeah. It's much less. <laughs> really bad out there because they're not trained that way. Now, Chris, somehow you picked up on this when you joined our educational oh. group and said, I gotta do, I gotta play the full game for these people. Otherwise, what good is accumulating and accumulating if you lose it all to Uncle Sam at the end of the game? There's well, no obligation. Right. There's no obligation to give Uncle Sam more than he's entitled to. And I don't know if you know this he's not even your real uncle. <laughs> so there's no obligation well, there. And I will tell you that um, you're absolutely right. I, I work with retirees. And so, you know, having this kind of expertise was really something that uh, in the wake of the SECURE Act 2.0, I said, you really need to be sure I'm boning up on all the, <laughs> the rules that are coming out. And your reputation and your program is seem like the, the right way to go, the expertise that it provides. And what I love about it as well is that, you, you and your team are available for case studies. When we have an issue or a question, we can reach out to you and say, hey, how would you handle this? What, what am I missing? What's the right answer for this? It's a great resource. You hit it right on the head, our team. I believe our team who you are familiar with, our IRA experts among the best in the country. And as being a member of our educational group, uh, you have access to them as your back office. So yes, many of our members, there are about 500 of them. So it is truly an elite group in the whole country. Now with hundreds of thousands of advisors, if you're watching this, you may be saying, why isn't my advisor looking out for me? Why, why isn't he learning? Because they were never trained to learn. They were trained to invest and grow. But with retirement accounts, you have to do more. And that's where most retirement money is. So as you said, Chris, you have access to our team of experts as your back office. But you also have another advantage having this knowledge. Uh, the biggest weakness in somebody's financial advisor is they don't know that they don't know. So they don't know to ask. That's dangerous when it comes to your retirement savings. Not everybody can know everything. We're studying this full time. So it's very good that you're in this group. So at least your antennas are up. When something comes up, you might say, at least I know I don't know this or I'm not sure about it or I think I'm sure, but let me check because you may only have one chance to get this right. Yeah, it's a great point. It's a great point. Um, let's let's circle back to um, what are the things that people should be paying attention to right now? There's so well, you hit it before. Think about the Secure Act chain up, the, and that was a few years ago. 
and then Secure 2.0. And in my in my career of studying tax law now, I hate to admit, for over 40 years as a CPA, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed one common theme that every time Congress names a new tax law, you can almost always bet that whatever they name it, it will do exactly <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> that is How's very that, true. Uh, Deficit Reduction Act working out, huh? How's that working out? Uh, so when Fair I enough. started the term Secure Act, I said to myself, oh boy, hold on to your wallets. And it was the opposite. It made people less secure because it upended the plans they had for passing what may be the, your largest single account, your retirement, your IRA, a 401k, a 403b to your beneficiaries. Before the SECURE Act, the beneficiaries could do what we call a stretch or extend the distributions over their lifetime. Not anymore. For most beneficiaries, they're going to have to bunch all that income into 10 years. And then they complicated all these RMD rules, both during life and after death. So you really have to work with an expert to even see if you have an RMD, a required minimum distribution this year. Remember for years, the age for IRA owners was 70 and a half for decades. Uh, that was always confusing. I mean, for years, I, I don't know, I, I do know, but it's a longer story where they ever got that half year from. Uh, but people would come in, remember, they're seniors, they come in, I don't know, am I 70? Am I 71? When am I 70 and a half? When is my birthday? What chart do I look at? What age do I? They were so confused. So the one of the best things of the SECURE Act, they got rid of that half year. They raised the age to 72, but that confused people. Well, who gets 72 and who sticks with 70 and a half? And yeah. as soon as they had that figured out, last year, just around this time, they came up with SECURE 2.0 and raised the age again to 73. So now people are even more confused. Wait a minute, uh, I just realized that my age is 72. So do I use 72 <laughs> or 73? So uh, the rule is, by the way, uh, if you turned 72 last year, you still have RMDs this year. You don't get to use age 73. If you turn 72, uh, this year in 2023, you get to wait till you turn uh, 73 next year. So here's a good way to look at it. I have it written down in front of me here because even I get confused. So I use by the birth year because nobody understands this. So I think most people will know what year they're born. Yeah. There you so go. here's the way it works for IRA owners. Any IRA owner born in 1950 or, or early earlier will have an RMD this year. At 51 or later, they won't. So that's a simple way, but they should always check with an advisor like you to make sure and make sure they're using the right table. The table's changed over the last few years. And look at their tax situation. You know, we have a, a very, uh, that's why I call my book, The Retirement Savings Ta uh, Time Bomb. Uh, we have a real problem in this country. It's a four letter word. Uh, it's the biggest risk to people's retirement savings. I hate to say the four letter word on your program, but the ri biggest risk to people's retirement savings is a four letter word. Nope, it's not kids. Everybody knows <laughs> that allows the investment. I'm still waiting for the return on that. Yeah. It used to be the American dream was to own your own home, but now it's getting the kids out of it. Yeah. Nope, the four letter word is math. M-A-T-H, as a CPA and an accountant, I, I believe in math. And I look at the deficit and debt. I mean, look at the, the numbers here on the debt, 33 trillion. I don't even know what it is now. Well, 33 but trillion, yeah. I used to joke, Chris, that it was a phone number. But now it's bigger than a phone number, <laughs> even right. with the area code and the one. Yeah. It's even uh, bigger. So I got to believe that this debt, I mean, Congress can keep kicking it down the road, but at some point, it's got to hit the fan. And who's most at risk? The people who have saved the most money in their IRAs. They did everything right. Yeah. And 401 ks because that money has not yet been taxed. I worry about future higher tax rates. So we talked about RMDs, those who have to take them before year end. I didn't get into the beneficiaries there. It's a real, uh, it's a real nightmare to figure it out. But even if you're subject to RMDs or you're not subject to RMDs, you may want to look at the tax rates today. Everybody complains about taxes, but right now, 
we have the lowest tax rates you may ever see in your lifetime. And that's why you want to work with somebody like Chris who understands the tax planning to look at today's tax rates. The fundamental principle of keeping more of your money, especially IRAs and 401ks, your tax deferred money, keeping more of it for you and less for Uncle Sam. And it's such a simple rule. I call it my always rule. Always pay taxes at the lowest rates. Yeah, that's I think a lot, of times, a lot of times accountants think, you know, well, let's just put it off as long as possible. Right, well, you can put everything off. Uh, you know, uh, my dentist has a sign in her office. It says, ignore your teeth and they'll go away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can well, put anything off. But uh, that's not know. the way taxes work. They don't go away, right? But so think of your IRA or 401k like a stock. Buy low and sell high. You know, the famous comedian years ago, Henny Youngman, said, I'm putting all my money in taxes. The only thing <laughs> sure to go up. He go. was right. That's what I'm saying. So I would say, yeah, you may or may not have an RMD, but look at how much money you can get out this year at rock bottom low rates. You'll always have more later because I believe tax rates can only go up. I don't see with our math and our budget and our debt numbers how it could ever go down, especially when you're a sitting duck and have all that money in a tax deferred account. You have a big bag of tax, like I said, that hasn't been taxed yet. That money hasn't been taxed yet. So you may want to look at getting the money out while tax rates are on sale. Everybody likes a sale. I'm telling you, taxes are on sale. So you may want to look at that before year end because you may only have three years left. Yeah, thanks thanks to uh, the uh, previous tax law, rates are low, but also inflation. Now, everybody knows inflation is a rough deal. Things cost more. But here's another little secret. When it comes to taxes, Inflation is great. Inflation expands the brackets. And that's what's happened over the last few years. In fact, the inflation increases expansions from 22 to this year, 23, the largest ever. And we just got the new numbers for 24. The rates are the same, but more money can pass through these low brackets than ever before. This is something to talk to your knowledgeable advisor like the advisors we train, like Chris, to see, maybe I want to get some more out. Maybe I want to take more than the minimum. RMD stands for Required Minimum Distribution. The M stands for Minimum. It does not stand for Maximum. Maybe you want to do some real long-term planning to keep more. Maybe take more out even before you start RMDs and do Roth conversions and get it into tax-free territories. So you only have three years left under the current tax laws. You know, Chris, we have 23, mm -hmm. 24, and 25. And then what happens after 25? Rates, Rates are supposed to be jacked back up. Yeah, the expiration of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, right? So, yes. So you, you, you've you got a three-year deal where you can get a lot of money out. So don't think minimum. Think, what can I do to have more when it counts most? The decisions you make now will determine how much you keep long-term, you and your beneficiaries, and how much will go to the government. You want to keep more and pay less. And you can only do that with planning. So that's a big part of year-end planning. Another part for people tend to think of charity. You know, the people like to make gifts yeah. at year-end. It's just a thing. Uh, everybody thinks about giving. Uh, giving under the current tax law has lost its lure, tax, its, uh, its luster, I should say, tax-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, most people do not get any tax benefits. They get nice benefits in knowing they're giving, but most yeah, the people- the standard deduction is higher and maybe- Right, they aren't getting the tax so. benefits. Certain groups, if this is you, if you're an IRA owner, 70 and a half years old or older, you have uh, the ability to do what's called a QCD. Now, this isn't required by year end, but it's another way to get money out of your IRA at 0% tax costs, a qualified charitable distribution. It's only available for IRA owners who are 70 and a half years old or older. And the benefit is you can get a tax benefit for getting money out of your IRA. And I'm not saying do this just to get a tax benefit. I right. never say do charitable planning for tax benefits because it doesn't work. You're still giving the asset away. I'm talking about people who give anyway, who are charitably inclined. Yeah. If you're giving, say, $5,000 to your favorite charity, a school, a church, or whatever, 
do it this way if you qualify take a direct transfer from your ira and that's something chris could help you with we just uh, had our one of our major workshops chris and you know we did a whole section a whole guide on charitable planning so yeah. he's well versed in that uh move from your ira to a uh using a qcd uh to the charity of your choice and that money doesn't count as a distribution so in effect you're following my rule always pay taxes at the lowest rates you're getting money you would have paid out anyway right at zero percent tax rates and remember IRAs are the best assets to give to charities because they're loaded with taxes. Charities don't pay taxes. So this is a great move, especially if you're what thinking of charity at year end. This is a good thing to look into to see if it's for you. Yeah, what a great way to do it. I mean, uh, you know, people used to talk about appreciated stock as an, uh, an appealing way. Well, that is, but for this right. group, uh, I hate to say it, there's no good way to say it since the QCD is only available to IRA owners who are 70 and a half or older, you're already talking about an older group. So giving appreciated stock, there's no good way to say it, isn't a good move when you're closer to death. I don't know how, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, how do you say that fully? Uh, uh, because as you get older, you want to hold on to appreciated assets because your beneficiaries get a step up in basis. That capital gains will be eliminated at death anyway. Better to use your IRAs and get that money out at a 0% tax rate. That sounds awesome. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, and you uh, seem to really uh, drive home to your advisors is just a really simple thing. And I thought I'd give you a, a chance to uh, oh, yeah. remind our listeners, you got to pay attention to beneficiaries. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the number thing. one mistake. This is a good, again, this is not per se to be done by year end. But when you're with family around the holidays, you start thinking of who's been naughty and who's been nice. This may be a good time to look at your beneficiary forms. Maybe somebody forgot your birthday. You want to make a change. Just saying. I don't know, but it's a good time to look at your overall plan and, and look back at life events, what I call life events. You had a birth, a death a marriage, a divorce, a change in the tax laws. You had a new grandchild. These are things, as you know, Chris, in our training, it's our first module. We take our advisors. And remember, I keep talking about our group, Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group. It has nothing to do with investments. I don't do investments. I'm a tax advisor. I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities. We train on the tax planning because we know these accounts are loaded with taxes and the beneficiary form will determine how much you get and how much goes to the government. So look at these beneficiary forms. You may even find that you can't find them. So we bang you over the head, as you know, Chris, our modules, our checklist yeah. that you have available. Checklist number one, the beneficiary form of about 35 different modules and checklists. It's the most important. It's where most of the mistakes are made. Most of the most costly mistakes, people can get disinherited. So I, I gave a few life events. One of them may be a divorce. Maybe there was a divorce. You didn't update the beneficiary form. Mm -hmm. You had a new grandchild. You may want to include that person, but you also have to know how the new 10-year tax rules work to beneficiaries. I would never disinherit or change a beneficiary because of tax reasons, but you should know the ra uh, ramifications of those payouts. And you may want to change. You may want to do Roth conversions and leave more of your uh, more of your retirement savings as a Roth to beneficiaries because beneficiaries, even subject to the 10-year rule, will get that all income tax free. It's like a gift you gave them, but it doesn't count as a gift. So you may want to think about doing a Roth conversion before year end. It's not due by year end, but we still have these three last years so far of low tax rates. This may be a time to do that, especially before you begin RMDs at now at age 73. Once you begin RMDs, you can still do Roth conversions, but you cannot convert the RMD itself. So it's a little more expensive. You first have to satisfy the RMD and then you can convert any part of the balance. But you may want to look at year end, getting some of that money out and converting to a Roth. What's the benefit for you? Well, first, you have to pay tax on that. But again, if you're getting it out at today's low rates, it's a good long-term move. But once you do that, the thing I love about the Roth 
is no RMDs forever for the rest of your life and even for the beneficiaries over the 10 years, except at the end of the 10th year after death, everything must come out to the beneficiary. But all those years of accumulation will be income tax free and you got it out at the lowest rate. So it may be something you want to consider, maybe doing a series of smaller conversions over these next three years, 23, 24 and 25, start moving those re retirement savings from tax deferred to tax free will make everybody's life easier. I call Roth IRAs tax insurance. It's insurance against the uncertainty of what future higher taxes could do to your standard of living in retirement. So I would look at that before year end, even though there's no real deadline for it. These are things to look at so yeah. you can have more, keep more and make it last long term for you and your family. Ed, um, you know, over the last few years, beneficiaries of inherited IRAs have had a little bit of a free ride. Uh, it sounds like that might have ended, huh? Do you think? Well, uh, beneficiaries uh, here, I don't want to get into the, the, the nitty gritty of the rules because they're just so complex. They're crazy. That's why you need somebody like Chris to go through it. You may find most of the beneficiaries that were subject to the 10 year rule on paper. It looks like they have to take an RMD this year. But IRS relieved that for most of those beneficiaries because it was so confusing. But again, if you're one of those beneficiaries subject to the 10 year rule, don't uh, we wrote a blog on this. You may have seen it on our website uh, called RMD relief. No, thank you. Uh, why? For the same reason I just told you, if you're a beneficiary and you say, oh, good, I have a year off. All you're doing is putting off the inevitable. You should be taking maybe voluntary distributions to smooth out the tax bill over these 10 years, unless it's a Roth. A Roth, you don't touch. That's the holy grail. Income tax free. As a beneficiary, you don't have to touch it till the end of the 10th year after death. And I wouldn't. I would touch any, I would use any other money first because nothing grows faster than tax free money. It's never eroded by current or future taxes. Now, Ed, last year you started a podcast with um, Jeff Levine, another right. tax genius. Um, how's that going? Is it still? It's going uh, great. We're working on our next season. We've covered a lot of topics. What's really good about that, again, the only winner in this debate, the only winner is the listener, the consumer who consumes this information because we neither one of us have a bias. Should you do this? Should you do that? Should I name a trust? Should I name his beneficiaries? Should I take RMDs? Should I do QCDs? Any question you could have thought of, we probably did. And we actually, Jeff and I, flip a coin to see who takes which side of the <laughs> argument. So and sometimes debate, I right? have to take yeah. an argument uh, against what I really believe. <laughs> and uh, but, but the point is that whatever side, there's two sides to every coin. That's why we flip a coin and yeah. we give the uh, listeners both the pros and cons, the benefits, drawbacks, whatever you want to call it, advantages and disadvantages. So you are the winner. You can take all the pros and cons and see how it lines up with what you want to accomplish so you can make the best decision for you. So there's no yeah, bias so on that. It explains all the issues. If you're thinking about trying to keep up on some of these issues, definitely is in an entertaining way. Enjoy the great debate, the great retirement debate that Ed and Jeff do uh, routinely. So in any case, uh, Ed, thank you so much for making the time. I want to remind everyone again, you can get the new retirement savings time bomb as a, as a way to keep up on these issues, as well as um, you got a new one coming out. We'll keep an eye out for that as well. Uh I would add, uh, Chris, get professional advice, like people like you who are trained and have uh, resources like us that can help you if you're watching now or listening. We threw a lot out at you, uh, again, just to raise your antennas to see that you may have issues and you need to go to somebody who has specialized knowledge. Most advisors don't. You may only have one chance to get this right. So if you're thinking of some of the things that Chris and I talked about, run it by him, your tax advisors. You want to make sure you make the right decision on what may be your life savings. Thanks, Ed. And if anybody does need help with their planning, certainly reach out to us at amrfinancial.com or uh, at 508-771-8900. Uh, uh, Ed, thanks so much. And until next time, keep striving for something more, everybody.
Thank you for listening to Something More with Chris Boyd. Call us for help, whether it's financial planning, portfolio management, insurance concerns, or those quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Whatever's on your mind, visit us at amrfinancial.com or call us toll free at 866-771-8901 or send us your questions to radio at amrfinancial.com. 